Okay, um, good afternoon, um, Damon Thomas. I'm the program coordinator and the founder for Healing with Hope, um, a faith based organization that I've started in Jamaica with a mission and uh, objective overall to spread the message of hope to persons who are living with and those who are significantly affected by HIV and AIDS. And I'm glad to be here to be a part of the AHU African American HIV Science and Treatment College um, today. And this is my presentation. Three clicks, please. And my topic is breaking the silence. And my desire is to break the silence in Jamaica or among our faith-based organization. Great. So we're just going to look at an uh, overview of the presentation. Basically, is look at the states of the state of AIDS in Jamaica. Basically, looking at the demographics, the epi epi epidemiology, called profile, target population, the HIV needs, and the gap analysis. Then we look at the Black Treatment Advocacy Network, DETAN, DETAN proposed project plan, process and outcome evaluation, success in the AU Fellowship, along with conclusion and recommendation. Next. Next. So, um, Jamaica, um, the, this picture basic, basically you're looking at um, is was taken by the Jamaica Gleaner. Um, so in 2012, when Jamaica entered the Olympics, and if you know Jamaica, you know that Jamaica always try to dominate <coughs> athletics um, in any the athletics in World Cup in Olympics or any IWF championships that they might have. And this was just a group of people gathering in the main town in Kingston, halfway tree, and they were at a big screen set up and they were celebrating. Um, the victory of Jamaica. So this picture was captured and I want you to make note of the era as well because we're going to look back at this location of another group that gathered in this location but for a different reason. But once you know Jamaica, Jamaica is also, apart from athletics, we are known for our food, our music and most of all our language and people tend to like to hear Jamaicans speak because I've had that issue whenever I'm speaking to people, they're like, oh, your accent is so deep, I can't focus. I don't know for what reason, but um, our language is very unique. And sometimes we take things and make it our own. And for me personally, every time I'm speaking to somebody, I have to repeat just for them to understand what I am saying. And overall, in Jamaica, it most recently, um, the PIOJ which basically review um, the statistics in Jamaica, they had reported that Jamaica um, poverty rate has increased to 16.5 percent from 9.9 .9 percent from 2007, and in 2009 it jumped to 16.5. But in 2014, March 26, the the Jamaica Gleaner had reported that. Jamaica poverty rate has increased and it is estimated that 1.1 million Jamaicans are living below the poverty line. Now, that is really alarming because the population of Jamaica is estimated at 2.7 million. So that's, that's, that's close to more than half the population is living below poverty line. And the minimum wage that a person can earn per week in Jamaica is basically 5,000 Jamaican dollars. It might sound a lot, but it is actually $44.64 per week. And it's not per hour or per day that they earn that, but that is what they earn for 40 hours per week. That was what they used to earn, and that has increased to $50 um, per, per week <coughs> so if they work at 40 hours. That's the minimum wage that they will get, and that's for any other work. But if you <coughs> work in security work, then the average pay that you will get per week is at $8,198, which is basically $73.20 in US. And that has increased from $7,320, which is 
$65.34 in US. So that's really low for many people, especially considering um, the statistics um, and the cost of living there. And Jamaica is also, um, it has 14 parishes. Um, the main capital, Kingston, um, most persons when they hear about Jamaica, they know Jamaica from Montego Bay, um, Ocherius, um, Negril, because uh, those are the, the tourist era. Those are where people would go for the, the beach, uh, the all-inclusive hotel. Also, most persons, only thing that they know about Jamaica is Bob Marley because of his music and the legacy that he has left um, here. And th that's basically um, Jamaica in, in a nutshell. And if you go to Jamaica, there's so much you can do. And there are so many places that you can go. Um, we have the Bob Marley Museum in which you can go. We have the Rose Hall um, House in Montego Bay in which persons can visit as well. And then we also have Port Royal, and if anybody knows the history of Jamaica, that Port Royal was once the place where everybody around the world would go for their parties, for their celebration. But due to an earthquake, um, part of Port Royal had sunk. But to this day, Port Royal still gets its visitors, still get entertained people. And <coughs> Port Royal is known for its fish. So once you go to Port Royal, you have to have fish. Next. Thank you. Um, and just an overview, um, within the Caribbean, since 2012, the Caribbean it has been reported, okay, click next, um, the second most affected region next to Sub-Saharan Africa, and the prevalence rate is at 1%, estimated 250,000 adults, including children, are living with HIV and AIDS within the Caribbean. And, but the good thing within the region, um, HIV infection fell by more than half, 25,000 in 2001 to 12,000 in 2012. So that's a great um, increase. And 52% drop in AIDS-related debt, 24,000 24, 24, in, two, in 2001 to 11,000 11, in 2012. So these are great progress overall for the region. So I'm going to just look at Jamaica in a nutshell as well. And the reported cases in Jamaica, this graph basically show the cumulative figures since, since the 1980s when the epidemic came about. They started to <coughs> calculate how many persons that has been reported um, to be living with HIV and AIDS in Jamaica. So the, the graph basically show 2010 and 2011. So, and then you have the differences between 2010 and 2011. So if you realize, um, based on the differences, um, HIV had increased from 2010 to 2011, 1,797 persons um, reported to, to be living with HIV. Advanced HIV, um, they had 1,250 persons, and then persons reported to basically um, to be living with AIDS is 975, and 393 persons have been reported to to be died of age-related illness. Next. And looking at the, I kind of split it out to look at focus area within Jamaica. My focus here is Kingston and St. Andrew, but I have to compare it to other parishes. And I selected St. James, St. Catherine. Reason being also because St. James and St. Catherine, along with Kingston and St. Andrew, make up more than 50% of the population in Jamaica. And then I included St. Anne because St. Anne is also known for the tourist era. So that era will also be affected. Reason B is because I you know that because of poverty, people tend to do things for money and then it affects the epidemic as well. So that's the data um, in Kingston. Basically, the number of cases that have been reported in 2011 is 525 HIV cases, eight cases. AIDS cases were at 313, along with 149 AIDS-related deaths. 32,000 people estimated to be living with HIV in Jamaica to date. And out of that number, if it, the previous data showed a cumulative number, 
that 29,000 today that they have been reported, but <coughs> estimated in Jamaica, they, they're saying that 32,000 people are living with HIV and AIDS, but out of that 32,000, 50% do not know that they're HIV positive, and that's another alarming figure as well, because half of that 32,000 do not know that they're HIV positive, so those persons are going around possibly infecting other persons. And because of that, 2,500 people in 2012 is estimated to be newly infected with HIV and AIDS. And that can be more and it can be less. But if individuals do not know their status, then some of them will not take the necessary precaution um, in terms of preventative measures. And this graph basically shows the total cumulative for the total region. Um, Kinson and St. Andrew since 1980, um, basically to date, since 2012 from the 1980s, it shows that we have a total of 10,512 persons that have reported <coughs> to be living with HIV. Um, 6,042 cases has been reported and 3,277 um, is related debt has been reported. And as I said before, um, I compared to St. James, St. Catherine, Kingston and St. Andrew because they make up more than 50% of the, the population along with um, St. James, which is known for as a tourist area. Next. These are the risk factors that drive the epidemic in Jamaica. And you can click next. The primary mode of transmission in Jamaica is sexual intercourse. Reason being, multiple sexual partner is estimated at 80%, greater than 80%. So these figures are, these numbers are cumulative since 1980s. So whenever a person reported or they have what type of activities that they have been involved in, they make note of it and write it down on the record. And they could basically give a number for sex with sex workers, persons who have said, at, I paid for sex. They had a number, 3,922. For persons using crack cocaine, um, they had a number for that. And more recently, they are showing more work has been focused for crack cocaine use because it is, especially for homeless persons, because they are seeing that maybe because much focus has not been done there, the true epidemic or the true data for that population is not known, so they are doing more effort to work in that area. Um, other persons, STI history, um, IV drug use, and some had no iris behavior, and they found themselves to be positive. And heterosexual practice is reported, and even though it is reported, um, 44% of the males who reported um, about being positive, they did not report uh, a sex preference. And this can be because of the stigma and the discrimination that might exist within the health sector. And yeah, thanks. And my focus group is a faith-based organization. And the reason being, the date according to the, the Jamaica 2012 International Visual Freedom Report, 21% of the Jamaica's 2.7 population do not have a religious affiliation. So it simply means that the other, the bigger difference is connected to a faith-based organization. It might not be, if they might go to the Rastafarian, the Muslim, the Jews, they, those churches are small, but persons still connect to a faith organization. Um, but the Christian community dominates um, in Kingston and St. Andrew, in Jamaica overall, I should say. Next, yeah. Yes. Uh, HIV prevention needs, uh, basically, housing and employment. Um, most persons you found that when they are positive, um, are you working? No and they can't get a job. Um, housing, um, where are you living? Um, most recently, even before I came here, persons said, if I know anywhere renting or somewhere where they can stay, if I could help them with that, 
I, I could not help them because I, I have no resources to help them in that area. So that's also a factor. And what we also need is more health services like psych psychological and mental services for individuals. And I believe also we focus on HIV science and treatment literacy, then persons can be more educated, more condom distribution in which further in the presentation you'll see why I said more condom distribution as well, which is a part of the project. And then funding to support other prevent preventable methods, basically like voluntary medical male circumstances and pre-exposure prophylaxis. So um, at one, we had a presentation in Jamaica with UNAIDS and one of the doctors from a CIFAR had asked him about PrEP and he mentioned that because of affordability, they cannot take on PrEP. So that's not something. But if funding can be, if they can get funding, then I believe that they can um, support pre-exposure prophylaxis. And the gap analysis is funding only going towards the men who have sex with men, the MSM community, most at risk population and HIV and AIDS linked to the gay community. And the reason being, I said all of that, you can click next. Remember, remember the first picture that I showed you about the people that gather in, in Afro Tree? Now, this was recent, um, June 30, 2014, within the same location that they gathered together to celebrate Jamaica victory in the Olympics. Now, thousands, <laughs> which is estimated at 25,000 um, people, individuals across different organizations, faith-based organizations, come together. Um, thousand rally against tossing out Bungrill Act, shout out for clean and righteous living. Now, this issue rise about or came about because of the recent sacking of Professor Bain, who worked with the Caribbean region, who in charge of HIV, within the Caribbean region. Now, the church believe that it is a gay agenda that really pushing him out, but it's really not a gay agenda, but the community believe that because of the focus of global funds and everything um, being going towards the MSM community and because of Professor Bay <coughs> believe they believe that he's not best fit for the, the position or that post, so they ask for him to be removed. The church was not happy, so the church has been demonstrating and they have been rallying. So we see where the issue comes now, where the church versus the MSM community, the gay community, and then HIV and AIDS in the middle of it. Now everything is kind of twisted together. Next. Okay, so B10, um, Black Treatment Advocacy Network. Um, overview, B10 is the mission of B10 is to increase access to and utilization of treatment and care, strengthening local leadership and advocate, advocate for policy change in black communities. And the goal overall of B10 is to produce and support a nationwide network of highly trained black treatment advocates. Next. And as we know, B10, the new cities that have beaten established, Melbourne, Baltimore, Little Rock, <laughs> Richmond, <laughs> Minneapolis, <laughs> um, Kingston, Jamaica, and existing B10 has been Philadelphia, Jackson, Houston, um, LA, Chicago, Atlanta, the Bay Area, Broward, um, Louisiana, and Washington, DC. Next. And overall, the B10 initiative is a strategy to educate individuals about the science of HIV the biomedical advances in the treatment of HIV and AIDS, and the role these interventions play in prevention. And the B10 logic model, which, um, which is a guide to all the B10, as it has an objective and the impact. Now, the objective which outline it serves Basically, I'm just not going to read everything, but it serves as an educator, as educators and opinion leaders within the communities. So these objectives are set out and they try to meet this objective, overall objective, and then the activity is came out through the four project area, which is basically advocacy, disclosure, patient navigation, and treatment education. 
and then from these activities they're expecting an output and once they establish with within these areas then the output should be that at least 200, 200 treatment education session um, 1,000 black people living with HIV and AIDS link, not only link to care, but also retain in care and re and those who have been dropped out of care can also re-engage into care and getting also persons who know about HIV to be and planning groups and councils and getting um, more persons living with HIV and AIDS to come about to disclose their status so that we can sort of end the stigma and discrimination around HIV and AIDS. And then our outcomes, as I said before, increase, so person's knowledge will increase on HIV, so be, they will be better able to take their health into consideration, better able to educate others, better able to, when they go to the doctor and the doctor say, oh, you should take that, they can question the doctor, or why should they take that? And they learn this, they know this, so they can question about their medication and their process. And the impact, as we say, what we want um, is to basically get more people into care, get people on treatment, and, and so once we can get people, to, especially to viral suppression, then guess what, we're achieving the goal. Uh, so people will be less, they'll transmit the virus, less likely to transmit the virus to someone else. Building B10, yes. So, list of potential, I still have potential partners, um, which is Jamaica AIDS Support for Life, um, <coughs> which basically is an ASO, which does HIV, all sort of, they basically try to do a lot of services for persons who are HIV positive, and they also focus on the LGBT community as well. Um, so, and they, their office is stigma free, and so persons will feel more safer going there. And not only that, but in, individual have the opportunity of going there, like if they have to work, they have the evening clinic, clinic, so they can go there in the evening. The Ministry of Health, um, which is in charge of policies and the laws in Jamaica, in Jamaica, so they are potential. Then the Center for HIV and AIDS Research Chairs, which is at the University Hospital of the West Indies, um, the Joint United Nations Program of HIV and AIDS, UNAIDS, the Joint United Nations Population of Funds, uh, which is UNFPA, and Caribbean Vulnerable Community Correlations, uh, Jamaica Network of Serp Positive, Color Pink Group, and Jamaica Network of Women Living with HIV and AIDS. Now, the Color Pink Group is uh, basically uh, they were recently published by ABC um, in some article online because um, the founder of that group has been doing work among um, transgender um, commercial sex workers. If you know about Jamaica, you've heard stories of persons living in the gutter and all of that. So he has been working with um, those youths and trying to get them um, education and training. And Jamaica. Network of women living with HIV. <coughs> the network stopped by a woman in Jamaica, basically trying to empower other women. Caribbean vulnerable community, basically, they wrote my letter of support for me to be here. And UNAIDS and UNFPA have also have been in dialogue with them about potential partnership as well. B10 training. Yes, so training. Wait. Sorry. All right, so basically, because I was here um, in LA, um, so August, I was here, I did not return back. I did not return to Jamaica until November. So my training basically, I took, my training was done in November. And when I got back, one of the issues that they were saying is that, oh, the timing was wrong, even though I've been sending out emails since I've been here about the potential date and everything. So when I got back, everybody was kind of tied up with um, World AIDS Day preparation. But nevertheless, I once I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So if I have 50 people, I'm going to do it. If I have one people, I'm going to do it. So that's just me. And basically, the topics that I focus on to do my presentation was, I can click, the <coughs> origin of HIV and AIDS, 
Origin of <laughs> HIV and Major Major Basic Science Discovery in HIV by Dr. Matthew Marsden. Um, introduction of epi Epidemiology, Reproductive Rate and Basic HIV by Dr. Just uh, like uh, Beatles with the D. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, HIV structure, life cycle, and replication, and future direction HIV basic research by Dr. Kitchen, and then pathogenesis of HIV disease and markers of progression and immune reconstitution by <laughs> Dr. Angie Chen. Next. Yes, my three day training basically um, after I make plans and everything and I submitted my proposal. So this is one of my challenge. My proposal was turned down because it was too costly. So I had to go back in the thinking board, rethink my proposal, and then I submit something half of what I'd submit, then it was still too costly, then I cut it down to below a certain amount and I still was wasn't getting any response. And at the last minute, I must thank BAI, Denisha, um, for her support. And basically, I was able to get three training, three training done. I didn't thought it was possible, because I said, OK, I'm just going to do one training, and then that's it. But Denisha said, you need to get three training done. I said, OK, something will work out. So nevertheless, um, I put by, I, I work, and I get something done. Um, so basically, Training one, that's it. Training one had training one Thursday, February the 20th by Dr. Jeff Jeffrey <laughs> Burrows from um, Chairs, and he works with the University of the West Indies. Um, basically, I've been engaging with him, and he came out and he did his presentation, and he basically focused on all those knowing the science of HIV, help people living with HIV and AIDS get to viral suppression, or can Jamaica benefit from other scientific research and where we're at. So he came and he did his presentation. Then we had, had another presentation um, Wednesday, February the 26th, um, bit next, where I focused on the overview of HIV basic science, um, introduction of cell and the immune system, basic HIV terminology, HIV life cycle, HIV disease progression, HIV transmission and prevention, opportunist infection and treatment. Uh, then we look at overview of science and research ethics, which we look at Tuskegee and Guatemala, um, HIV PrEP and PEP, what is PEP and PrEP, and what is combination prevention. And then the final training in which I did prior to coming to the other training back in California, I had with my church um, Sunday, March the 8th, and we focus on what is HIV and AIDS, signs and symptoms, HIV and Jamaica. And we close that presentation with Alisa Keys, where empower greater than AIDS. So the topics that I've selected versus my problem statement, <coughs> um, particip participant has the ability to know some of the current research and progress in HIV and AIDS research and how important it is to know these information in order to effectively, effectively and positively prevent the transmission of HIV to get to an AIDS-free generation. So that's, that's why I selected those topics. And the network that supported me to get these training done, BAI for Black East Institute for their funding, um, um, CHAIRS, which is the UA, um, they provided a presenter, which is Dr. Burrow. And he was willing, and they, he carried a projector laptop for training one, CDC, Caribbean Vulnerable Community for the Camera and the tra and Training One, UNAIDS, they supplied, supplied me with the projector, CBC again for Training Three, they provided a projector, and my church, United Way Church of God, uh, basically was willing to participate in Training Three. Next. And this is a review, um, this is an <coughs> evaluation report by Dr. Burr presentation, and basically, um, after within the training uh, with Dr. Burrow training, which is training on, we have 14 participants, and they basically 
as you can see, the the percentage of the, the, the result that they gave Dr. Burrow. But overall, um, one of the things, one of the key thing that they were saying is that the presentation that Dr. Burrow did, they want his presentation to be done among key stakeholders because that presentation is really important and they believe that other persons in the sector should really know those information in order to effectively um, bring an end to the AIDS epidemic in Jamaica. Then click next. And for my presentation, basically the participant really appreciated the information and they really wanted more, even though they were saying that the time was too short, they wanted more time, they wanted more information and <coughs> out, out of that training, basically they are saying that, especially Tuskegee, Tuskegee and Guatemala, they wanted um, to go further details to see how is Jamaica being affected in terms of the research that has been done in Jamaica and what ethics guide research in Jamaica as well. Okay, next. So this is basically a flyer, well the banner that I've designed, that I've used for all three trainings. Okay, next. Some pictures, Dr. Burrow, training one, participant, and this is at church, can click next, at the last session, that's uh, the prior mother for the church, Minister Matthews, praying the opening prayer. So we also recognize um, national prayer for healing of AIDS as well, on that same night as well, which was the last night of that celebration. Thank you, next. Proposed, be, proposed project plan, the next. So my proposed plan with my problem statement is that 16,000 Jamaicans are estimated to be living with HIV and AIDS and do not know it. The church over the years has been integral in the lives of Jamaicans and is very influential, influential in their lives. With, with this in mind, the church has a platform to get individuals tested in order to know their status, but stigma and discrimi discrimination that exists within the churches are factors that hinder individuals from being tested with next. And overall, the goal is, the aim is to bring awareness to individuals and with over 60% of the general population connected to a faith-based organization, education is key. Next. Next. And the overall objective of the project is to bring greater awareness to faith-based organization, um, to build the capacity of faith-based leaders so that they can know more about HIV to engage their congregation, um, to examine the, the major challenges that HIV, to examine the major challenges of addressing HIV and AIDS within the faith-based organ, in the faith-based organization, um, to give faith-based leaders the know-how so that they can approach HIV and AIDS without stigma or discrimination, build a network with the churches, and also to mobilize the leaders so that they can impact the epidemic as well. Next, next. So the proposed treatment education project um put the first treatment the proposed project is basically to break the silence bridge with hope leadership and empowerment conference on hiv and aids in jamaica um next this training conference is basically to target 50 faith community leaders um basically to get them these information these trainings so that they can know the information so that they can impact their community and the purpose of this project is basically speaking the truth, John, John, St. John 8, verse 32, without stigmatizing or discriminating to create an enabling church environment for those living with and significantly affected, significantly affected by HIV and AIDS. Next. The other project, click next, is basically um, combining patient navigation and disclosure where we're <coughs> trying to get um, at least 20 persons who are living with HIV and AIDS connected to a faith-based organization, basically to educate them on the same science and treatment literacy information, and also to give them information surrounding disclosure and how they can handle disclosure if they have not yet reached that phase in their life. Next. 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 Yeah. So the advocacy project that I have in mind. Basically, I call it advocacy campaign. 
is basically we cover HIV testing, um, AIDS work in Kingston, Jamaica, condom distribution, and a social media campaign. And, and this is basically as well to get faith-based leaders as well, especially like in the AIDS war, to get faith-based leaders <coughs> an opportunity so that they can show their love and support um, for persons who are HIV, living with HIV and, HIV and AIDS. And also on the social media campaign to basically get all this information out to persons within social media like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, um, Instagram, because those things, a lot of Jamaicans will frequent, so get those information there. And the objective is getting at least 50 people tested, um, wider access for condom distribution, basically within three months, um, like 50,000 condoms must be distributed within three months. Um, social media to educate people, raise awareness of the epidemic in Jamaica, and basically with the AIDS work, whatever funding that we get, basically to support grassroots organization that likes the Color Pink Group and the Jamaica Women Network, Jamaica Women <coughs> Network of Jamaica Network of Women Living with HIV, and basically also give this organization an opportunity to let the wider community to see how they show their love and support. Next, and reason being why I selected um, the church and my objective is basically this: these are these data came from the, the, the needs assessment that I did, which come from the Inter International Journal of Communication <coughs> uh, Fitness Initiative Response in Jamaica. So these were like some studies that they've done among faith-based leaders. And we're just paraphrasing because it's, it's done in Jamaican dialect. So basically what the first one is saying, if I know someone who is, if I know a church sister who is HIV positive, if I know a church sister who has AIDS, I will let her stay on the outside. Because if she basically stay in crowd, then I don't know what she will do. She will basically spread spread it to everybody else if we are not careful. So that's basically what they're saying. Um, the other one, support what the person said. I, I say the same thing because even if it's somebody who I know, I would feel sorry for them. But to tell you the truth, the truth, I would lock them away, lock them, lock down the very first person who is who was positive, so that we so that we would have better control <coughs> of the epidemic and throw away the key. So that's the stigma and discrimination that exists. Next. 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 And then from the PLHIV, from people living with HIV and AIDS, they say that the hostility against people living with HIV and AIDS that they face from the faith-based community, it is unacceptable and they wish that the church would basically do more and also, somebody else is saying that the church is already spreading the message message to people. So all the church need to do now is get better information about HIV so that they can better send the positive message to other people so that they can know that the church is with them and the church will support them. Um, where we're at quickly, um, basically, B10 Kingston is not yet fully established. But at this time, um, I've been engaging other people, and they have shown interest. And it is my desire and my goal to get people, instead of they saying, OK, we want to do this, we want to do that, and then at the last minute, they don't show their support. Um, basically, I want to get more organization in, in tune for them to support us, for them to support the, the cause, especially the four focus era of B10. Um, it is really integral in the epidemic of Jamaica. So that's where we are at now. And my review and monitoring of the three project era basically, um, there will be basically pre and post tests, um, registration sheets, sign pledge form, um, basically for the, the, the treatment education, patient navigation and disclosure, and for the advocacy campaign, Basically, we have the same thing, signing sheet, um, how many tests being used, how many tests read, um, login form so that we can have accurate information, and also to, to see social media insight. So if we do the social media campaign, how many people within Jamaica actually see that campaign that we did? Next. And success, click next. Click next, click next. Well, one, one. <laughs> Basically, um, 
completing the training with limited or no compu computer access to include internet. So completing the training with limited or no funding and maximum support from the BAI team and fellows. So basically, um, for me to be here today, for me to reach at this point, at many times I say, oh, I want to give up. I don't want to bother with it. Uh, but when I think about um, the cost of everything and everything that I've put in, I said I've come thus far, I might as well finish. Even two days ago, I was like, okay, I should not bother with all of this. But I've still come this far, and I feel that I've ac accomplished a lot, especially within this training. I've learned so much, especially within from UCLA. I did not know so much about HIV and AIDS, knowing that I started 2012 fully in the whole advocacy work. And this training has really prepared me today um, where I know so much more about HIV and AIDS. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, uh, my conclusion and future mobilization is, as I said before, is if we're going to do these sessions or these, these proposed plan, basically a continue, continuous um, leadership and empowerment conference on a yearly basis. And basically, all of these support groups and social media campaign and is well, basically step by step. So if we're in, if we're starting in Kingston, basically move it to Saint Catherine, move it to to Saint James, move it to Saint Anne. So moving it into different parishes so that those regions can be within the within the the know about what is happening. Also, recommendation like for other Jamaicans to be a part of our. Um, future training because it it has done me well and I believe that other persons uh, will benefit from it as well and also to get a more rooted and grounded organization that is fully structured to that has the funding and the financial background to be in this because it's really costly so um, so that's one of my recommendation as well and also for membership in terms of to establish B10 so that anybody who wants to be a part of B10 they must have mandatory training in HIV and AIDS and because everybody in Jamaica mostly they want to volunteer they want to do this but they have no information about HIV and AIDS so basically bring them through that process of them knowing the information and then basically they can work um, within the sector next next and at the end we're open to bridging with hope. So once we break the silence, we open to bridging with hope so that individuals who are HIV positive and those who are significantly affected will always have hope. Uh, next. Thank you.